We've all seen it and we've all had our say. I am of course talking about Katy Perry's new Shepherd flight last month. I was waiting for a suitable person to make a video on it and lo and behold, they did. It was Level Earth Observer, of course, and he says the embarrassing truth regarding Blue Origin and Katy Perry. Hello everyone and welcome along to day 12 of One A Day For May where I release a video every single day this month for the month of May to celebrate hitting 300 million total views on the channel. My name's Simon Dan, thanks very much for joining me. Just a quick interruption from me though to tell you a bit about my history. I used to work in retail and leisure management. The hours were long, the salary was not great and the appreciation was minimal. In fact, it was so bad that I was working 60 hour weeks only getting paid for 40 hours and barely seeing my newborn daughter. It almost broke me, to be honest. I would have done anything to have something like today's sponsor, Triple Ten, back then. Triple Ten is the platform where you can get a tech education and then jump into tech. It's very beginner friendly, with flexible learning tailored to busy schedules and compatible with office work. Triple Ten teaches professions and helps people change their lives and thrive in the world of technology. 82% of grads get hired within six months of completing their program. And they've got to get a job or get a 100% money back guarantee. The salaries in tech are good as well. A median salary of a Triple Ten graduate is $70,000. Be confident in your future, no fear of layoffs anymore. Anymore. They teach careers that will remain relevant for decades, and you can learn the skills that AI cannot replace. Start learning a new job starting from $200 a month, and click the link in the description or scan my QR code here for a free career consultation. Right on with today's video, where we look at Level Earth Observer's take on the uh, Blue Origin New Shepherd flight, which included Katy Perry as one of her passengers. Before I get into it, I just want to say it was, of course, all real as were the 30 previous flights before this one. They didn't start taking people up though till flight 16, of course. But let's see what Elio has to say on this one with Katy Perry and here we go. Today I'm gonna to address this Katy Perry stroke Blue Origin charade. Not that I need to, because not many people are actually believing this silly publicity stunt. Even people at my work are calling this out and they're mainstream believers. Highly unlikely, but even if they did, so what? That doesn't mean that it wasn't real. But I'm going to show you two clips that just destroy the mainstream narrative regarding this so-called space mission. Bear with me. So we'll start with this now infamous clip of this so-called space capsule and the caravan door hatch. I saw the stars, I saw the curvature of the earth. You know, what, what, what is, what's gonna come out of, uh, out of, out of her, her? So we see the participants in this charade on the inside of the capsule, open the caravan door, no stress. Remember, this is supposed to be an air pressure capsule. Yes, I know you can supposedly open it from the inside, but the flimsiness of this door, like I said, it resembles a caravan door. Ah. I thought you would start here. The door can be opened from the inside. It sort of has to for safety reasons. And the door is a plug fit, which means it's held in place by pressure. And since they're back at Earth's surface and the pressure is equalized, then it can be opened. And it just shows you the fact they've opened it and then Jeff has this big key to open it in a minute, just shows you it's all a charade. And the next clip I'm gonna show you is just gonna destroy this silly pantomime. Her mouth, but really her heart. Which and is that is that Jeff Bezos out there right by the capsule? Kind of hard to see. Okay. Good. Okay, here we go. Yeah. Here goes Jeff Bezos to open the hatch. Oh. <laughs> Ridiculous. Swung open like a caravan door. And again. Clearly this was just a PR stunt gone wrong. Jeff Bezos wanted to be the one that opens the door, as he usually does. The ladies inside got all excited, opened it, someone said no, don't do that, Jeff wants to open it, so they shut it again. Then Jeff comes along with his special tool to open it from the outside. Again, the reason it opens so easily is because it was designed that way. Easy access and safety. <laughs> once more, and I'll zoom in on this ridiculous build quality. 
so-called hatch for a spacecraft. Like I said, ridiculous. Now we're supposed to believe you've got four ladies in there in boiler suits. It was six ladies actually, uh, not four level Earth observer. Been blasted off into a rock on a rocket, went 62 miles up, right to the edge of so-called space, the Kármán line. Their protection was a caravan door and some boiler suits. That's what we're supposed to, ex that's what we're expected to believe. Well, it flew 15 times before anyone went inside. It was tested thoroughly. And you have to remember, suborbital space tourism aims to balance safety, comfort, and commercial appeal. They aren't going to orbit or deep space. It's all good. Now, what's gonna make it even worse now is what I'm gonna show you. The suit by itself is roughly about $125,000. Um, altogether, a fully dressed pilot is about $4 million. Um, it's uh, about $60,000 on a phone. Um, it's a lot. Now we're discussing the U-2 pilot who flies at a surface ceiling height of approximately 70,000 feet. Convert that to miles. That's 13 miles up, okay? Look up the setup the U-2 pilot needs inside of his cabin. The main difference here is time. The amount of time a pilot is in the cockpit compared to the passengers in Blue Origin's New Shepard. The U-2 plane pilots are up there for hours, not minutes like with New Shepard flights. A U-2 pilot operates in an environment where failure to wear a full pressurized suit means death. A New Shepard passenger only flies in a pressurized cabin for a few minutes and needs that basic protective suit. The difference is clear to see, Level Earth Observer. Uh, it's very expensive because it's their last line of defense um, flying in the U-2. It's very unique because it provides overall um, the survivability of their life. Because our U-2 pilots fly high sorties um, and they fly for long periods of time, we gotta keep them hydrated, we gotta keep them fed. So once the full pressure suit is locked down, they cannot open it again until they recover from their sortie. He's literally telling you they're up there for a long time, matey. Did you even watch this video before showing it? If by instance they were flying at the altitudes that they fly at and they would open their helmet up to like scratch their nose, if at that instant they were to lose cabin pressure, the blood in their body would instantaneously boil and be instantaneous death. So we have our pilots, we tell them once they close down, do not open until they land. Yeah, that wouldn't be a very good day. And bearing in mind, this is the U-2 pilot. He flies at 70,000 feet, which is approximately 13.2 miles up, I believe. But inside the cab, um, the cockpit, sorry, of his uh, high altitude plane, he has to wear a specialized space suit. Remember, he's locked down inside the plane. And then inside of the plane, he's wearing a space suit because of the environment. He's, you know, very high up. Did you look up what the pressure inside a U-2 plane cockpit is, Elio? I don't think you did, did you? That cockpit is only partially pressurized, around 27 to 29 kilopascals. The pressure here on Earth's surface is around 100 kilopascals. That's the equivalent of being on a high altitude mountain. That is why the suit for the U-2 plane has to be as it is. Long exposures at those pressures is not good for the body. Meanwhile, the cabin for the new Shepard flight has a pressure equal to that here on the Earth's surface. That is a full slam dunk debunk, my friend. And should, <laughs> should he lose cabin pressure where he was scratching his nose, his blood would boil instantly and he would die. And yet we're supposed to, is expected to believe that these women in boiler suits with a caravan door protecting them from the harshness of near so-called space went 62 miles up in a space capsule. No space suit, like I said, four boiler suits or whatever it was and a caravan door. All fit for purpose, as we've already discussed. As usual, Elio, you can't believe something happened, so your little mind assures itself that it indeed did not happen, and that it must have been fake. Oh my God, I 
saw the stars. I saw the curvature of the Earth. You know what? What? What is? What's going to come out of? Uh, out of? Out of her? Her? Her mouth, but really her heart. When and is that? Is that Jeff Bezos out there, right by the capsule? Kind of hard to see. Okay. Good. Okay. Here we go. Yeah. Here goes Jeff Bezos to open the hatch. So bad, so embarrassing. No wonder normal mainstream believers now are scratching their head and starting to ask questions. This Blue Origin has done more damage than good, just like the final experiment did and has done now. Initially, they had some momentum and were able to fool some naive individuals. But of course, physical reality hasn't changed because of a so-called observation of the sky in Antarctica. I wondered how long it would take you to mention that. That one's still hurting, I imagine, is it? And people have now realised that. Plus, Mr Final Experiment himself, Will Duffy, even said, we can't talk about things in the sky when we're talking about the Earth. <laughs> and of course, when we analyse space, whether it be SpaceX or this Tosh, and you compare the build quality of the capsule and the protection that was so-called on offer, and then you compare it to the YouTube pilot who flies at 70,000 feet which is what 13 miles up so he's nearly 50 miles lower than the girls in the boiler suit with the caravan door you tell me did these people go to space yep just they really did all evidence suggests it you on the other hand brought forward a laughable argument that you didn't research properly. Well done you. Right, well there we go. What did we all think of that one from Level Earth Observer? Let me know in the comments below what you thought on his argument. As I say, we're all done and dusted for another one. Thanks so much for watching today. If you enjoyed it, please do consider subscribing to the channel, hitting the thumbs up button too, and even sharing the video if the feeling takes you. Thank you. I've been Simon Dan. Have yourselves a great day and I'll see you tomorrow for the next day of videos for One A Day of May. A Tim Ford Tuesday, no less and a long-awaited response from me. See you then.